card links to the star card. And it, first of all, isn't that funny? You know, you've got these two opposites, haven't you? Sun, day, star, night. And the opposite sides of the spectrum. You know, one side of the up, up the, the hill and then the down and they're coming back to the light. So at midnight, what happens at midnight? We're turning back towards the dawn, aren't we? Night is no longer, we're not getting into the night anymore at that point. We turn back towards the light. So we're like the age of one minute past midnight, shall we say. This awakening, you know, is coming. And the traits of this card, the star card, is hope, inspiration, generosity, serenity. You know, what we're all trying to breed now, you know, Buddhism's never been so popular. And uh, that talks about loving kindness, doesn't it? You know, compassion, benevolence, the rise of the feminine, what does the matriarch embody, what the patriarch doesn't. It's this benevolence, this equanimity, this compassion, you know, no more war, no more taking, let's just share, let's not have no more borders, let's just be one race for goodness sake. You know, and the, the, the feminine does that, doesn't she, fiercely, like the lioness. She guards and she hunts, she takes care of everything doesn't she? So that's, just think it's so amazing, and all these signs, like yes, that's what's going on, this is what's going on. And so, that links to Aquarius. And so, so how do we do this then? How do we get, get into more of this magic of ourselves? It's alright having these, understanding these concepts, and being able to think about these things, and read these books and all of that, but is it really practical in our lives right now? It's not, is it? It's good, makes good conversation, makes mm. interesting conversation, and you know, challenges a little bit, stuff like that. But it's no good if we can't make it practical. We can't do something with it. It's not real wisdom then, is it? It's just knowledge. It's just intellectual knowledge. We don't just want that. We want to be able to do stuff with it. So, first of all, let's get to know our body. Because this is the spaceship, the vehicle for all of that magical stuff. All of that metaphysical, subtle, energetic stuff. So... Uh, I don't know if you know, but I'm uh, an applied neuropsychologist, so nerves and brains and stuff really float my boat. <laughs> and this, being able to merge energy, because I love the spiritual concepts as well, being able to merge that and the physicality of the, the, the body, it, for me, it's just been monumental in my understanding of how all these things work. So, our central nervous system is, an, is electric. Our heart is a pump that's got um, a, a node in it which fires a pulse, an electric pulse, which makes it beat. Right? And without our hearts, our body would be goosed. Our brain works with chemicals, but also electric. So you've got neurons in your brain which fire an electrical current down itself, and it charges at little points all the way down. And then at the end, it'll tell what type of chemicals to release into the synapse. And then that message will get passed on to the next new law and then it becomes electric again. So that's how our bodies work. And all of, all, everything that manifests from you, all the way that you think, um, oh, all of you, you breathe at night, you just trust your breath, you go to sleep, don't worry about it. You know, your memories, your personality, the, the way that we interpret, you know, the light that comes into our eyes so we can see and we can perceive things with depth, perception, all of it. It's all codes, all binary code in this thing brain inside our head it runs like a computer so it's just got codes in it and they're called engrams traces programs memories all electric all electric so that's just really amazing isn't it and so we give off this electromagnetism and it's a a wave a wave from <coughs> and they studied they were like where does it come from where does it come from this source this wave that comes off these humans where does it come from this so they put people in copper boxes because scientists like to do things like that let's have some controls let's put them in copper boxes and we'll do this fancy equation and we'll work out where it's coming from and we'll also measure it so they put different types of people in and um, they put in people with average, average humans people with mental or physical ill health athlete, elite athletes but they also put in this copper box People who cost themselves as spiritual healers, right? Now, have a guess <laughs> how many millivolts the average human puts out. A millivolt is a thousandth of a volt. Any guesses? 67. 67. 67 millivolts. Average human, 30 to 100 millivolts. That's pretty much bang on. Yeah. <laughs> 
top ten Deborah Zell play. <laughs> what about mental or physical health? So 30 to 100 for someone average, and that's quite a wide spectrum, isn't it? What about someone in mental or physical health? 150. 20? 150. 5 to 9 millivolts. Millivolts. Now, what about elite athletes? They're primed, don't they? They're like the Duracell bunnies. <laughs> 200? 200 millivolts, that'd be 2 volts, right? No, it wouldn't. It'd be 0.2 millivolts, wouldn't it? No. And basically, yeah, 2, vol two volts. 2 volts, which is 2,000 millivolts, an elite athlete. Now, when they did this equation, this, sorry, 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 we'll do healers as well. So spiritual healers, what about spiritual healers? Five volts. Five volts. Yeah. <laughs> right. Ten. 25 to 250. Whoa. 25 to 250 volts. Now, that is a lot, isn't it? Why are they not all giving each other electric shocks all the time? Why are they exploding? And so the interesting thing is, when they put when when we put um, the source location equation on, we realise that average human consciousness, mental and physical health, and elite athletes, the source of the output of this electromagnetic waveform was the heart. Right, but for spiritual healers, it was the sacral, the sacral chakra. There's no heart there. There's no brain there. Isn't that interesting? So if you know something about chakras, right, I invite you to explore that. Because this, the sacral chakra, when you look at the philosophy of chakras, each one's got its own personality. Everybody heard of chakras, yeah? Yeah. So it's the orange one, typically the orange one. Second one up from the root chakra, and Svaristana, they call it in Sanskrit, means one's own base. And it basically embodies the traits of power. Manifesting, you know, that connection to the power all around. And manifestation power. And in women's bodies, in, in the female gender's body, what have we got there? What physical thing have we got there? Mm. A womb, mm. which is a seat for manifestation. Right? So it, it seems to be then this space of harnessing and bringing through all of that energy which is around that we're all plugged into all at the same time, right? So we'll come back to that in a minute. Mm. So we've got this electromagnetic force from the physical body then, yeah? But in the healers, it's something else. And is, it that, is that not the subtle body then? So let's explore that now. So this beautiful guy, Harold Burr, was a professor at Yale University. And he said the field starts it all. And he had some really interesting concepts. He called them the L field, the life field. And he studied things like salamanders. And he'd get an egg and he'd see that they'd be, it had this special camera, special equipment. And he'd, he'd, he'd see the shadow around this egg which was the same sh shape as a fully grown salamander. And that the, the fetus would grow into that. So it like it had this shadow around it. And then his, his student, um, so he said all living organisms are surrounded and encompassed by their own energy fields. So it's this subtle body that we grow into, something, something that's there before we're fully manifest with our electromagnetic field. And his student, now I'd always said this before I come across this, that when the full moon goes, it causes everyone to go a bit freaky. And that's where the word lunacy comes from. It's increased neurosis, we can't sleep, does everybody struggle? Sometimes, yeah, when there's a full moon. I was going to do an experiment just to see, you know, send a text message around, like, rate your sleep from 1 to 10, all the students in, like, the universities in the northwest and then gather all that data and you'd see this like drop in the rate of sleep I, I hypothesised. Anyway, I didn't need to because I come across this guy, Leonard Rabbits, who was a neurologist and psychi psychiatrist, and he found a significant correlation between the lunar cycle and the L field. So this subtle energy, and that it peaked around the full moon. So we've got this influence of the energy that's all coming into our subtle kind of like fractal part of it, which then influences our electromagnetic body, which then influences our psyche and our endocrine system and our body. So it becomes physically manifest from 
the energy all around. So that, to me, says, oh, well, we're definitely connected then. And so if you look through history, you've got conceptualizations of this energy field, this subtle energy field, from all kinds of philosophers and scientists. It's been called um, the Odic Force, um, Bruner's Biocosmic Energy, William Rake's Argon Energy, Rupert Sheldrake's Morphogenic Fields, Newton's Cosmic Ether, Mesmer's Universal Fluid and Nanomagnetism, and the Archaeus of Paracelsus. But we might talk about it as something different. A four-letter word beginning with A. Aura. Yeah. That's what we call it, isn't it? If you think about the aura and the chakras again, chakra means wheel, and the, the seven kind of, you've got main organs in your physical body. I, I kind of see the chakras basically as the main organs of your subtle body. Mm. So, this is curly in photography. And if we think now, back to the, the waveform, what they found. Also, when they had these people in these copper boxes, they experimented with different types of emotions and looking at the form of the wave and what it looked like. So when people were in stereotypically heart-based emotions, like gratitude, appreciation, love, the waveform was very, very beautiful. It came out in a beautiful shape. It was in harmony with everything around it. And when they weren't, when they were in uns like negative heart-based heart emotions, like anger, um, envy, all of these things, the waveform was static. It wasn't harmonious. And so then we get to like good and bad vibes, right? And we've all felt that, haven't we? You go into a room and someone's raging, mm. the energy's thick with it. You, you get sucked into it sometimes. And there are other people, you get people who are really confident, exude this kind of joy in spaces like this. Our hearts are really open because we're all, we've all got this harmonic resonance. We're all working together to get to that space. That's what the intention is when we come to places like this. And so, um, what this, what these pictures encapsulate is that, so I don't know if you can see this, but this is a fingerprint of curly in photography, and it's all, as the energy is coming out of the fingertip, you've got blobs of it, it's not, it's not symmetrical, it's not smooth in its pattern, so you can see here in the pictorial form how the waveform looks when someone's in anger. And this one, which is like a halo, really equal all around the fingertip, is somebody that's in love. And then this one is someone that's been doing spiritual healing. So this is their fingertip at rest. Can you see there's kind of nothing coming out of the end? And then this is one during a treatment. And you can see there's like a glow projecting out of the end of the finger. So for me, what Colleen Photography is doing is it's encapsulating, you know, in pictorial form, this energy flowing when it's directed with consciousness. Or what it looks like when we're in different emotions, emotional states. And that's really important, but we'll get to that later on. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum. So at one side you've got things like gamma rays, everything is waves, photons are waves, energy is waves, everything's wave and particle, like a photon is a wave and a particle at the same time. And so you've got radio waves at one end, you've got microwaves here, You've got uh, radioactive rays, X-rays, soft X-rays, ultraviolet, infrared on this side. And then right here, just this tiny, tiny, tiny bit here, you've got the visible spectrum. So that's the rainbow. That's all we can see. Out of all of these waves, our human eyes, our human brains, can only see the waves that are this shape. Can't see any of the others. Can you imagine if you could? Mm. You'd turn your Wi-Fi off at night. You'd ask your neighbours to turn theirs off and all, wouldn't you? Mm. We'd have no phones either, either, either would we? Mm. We'd have none of that. You wouldn't cook in your microwaves anymore either. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's where, that's where, and this is where we are, people. This is our kind of um, shape of our waves. And so, energy likes to express itself from the thing it's expressing itself from in a toroid. A toroid is like a donut shape. And so when we're in love, when we're in harmony and we're flowing, our toroid spirals up and out and around us and down and comes back in and up and out and around and down and back in. And there's a toroid of this laptop going and a toroid of the tree, a toroid of each blade of grass and inside each atom's got its own toroid as well. And so of all of you and all of your toroids are mixing, you know, and my toroid's probably going a bit crazy because I'm a bit nervous and trying to think about things and stuff like that. So my energy's obviously a bit different to all of yours that we're sat and trying to absorb. 
Um, but that's how we interact. And so when, we've, when we're in anger, our toroid gives off this static kind of stuff. And it plays havoc with all of the toroids all around it. And that's what we feel, that's what we're all sensitive to. And we've all experienced that.